Hey everybody, welcome back to Season 2 of Talking Time with Caffeine. I have a, for, this is a brand new season, we have a brand new a, a co-host. Introduce yourself, brand new co-host. I had to dump that stink paradox guy, he was just dead, dead weight. Whoever you are, it's good to have, it's great to have you here. Yeah, I was wondering about that since both seem to have opposition for reasons and and uh, they're but still growing. And is there some states that don't have gay marriage but have civil unions? It's the same thing. There's a difference. Before we started, the ones my state, I don't think it, it doesn't do marriage on the, the unions or not. Ohio. I got my pages and coming my page, but the website I looked at it's like it's like 33 states have and 17 haven't. That because that so that might be wrong now. Internet and all the rates and stuff. It's like some states were from judges, others were for amendment, and some were from popular vote. Anyways, then Mary, do so you think I'll be around for a while? I'll be around for a while. I think it'll take a little bit longer for marijuana to, to get active. Yeah. I don't think I don't think even all fifty states are even metal yet. I think some are. No, medical marijuana. But not for recreational. of a cake.
definitely you got your your hand burn or something or. or They will. They're probably the game that beat up the same people that beat you up. Because, yeah. Because, let's see. Something you for it. Uh, not. Uh, Pressure just knows no bounds. They can hit everything. We do. We do suck. I think we all do. Uh. So, have you got any, any trolls for attacking you lately on the internet that you want to reply to right? That you want to reply to right now?
so they just like. Less and less. paid less. And we barely get that like, after taxes and stuff like that. Like, taxes. And then they also like do the creations do like just sprout the same thing over and over again, like creations do. What's that catch price? I'm sure they're I'm changing the dictionary for them just right now because of because of that. Like dictionary being changed as we speak. And what they uh, You said the one of
it reminds me of like the year two ago on the opposite spectrum the the Republicans or conservatives were saying that talking about what what they talking about uh not legal uh, about rape too but that's mm. uh, for Legal, right? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know what they call it, but, but, but they couldn't, something about rape that they were talking about in brain stuff, about how, I forget what it was, but it's just too, it was too bad. Yeah, that's the, I think after the first, the, the first two, yeah, the first two I agree with. The, the next three a little iffy, you know. If you, if you like, if you grab a kiss out of nowhere, it's probably yeah, just like friendly or whatever. I guess the first people was a lot of women then. Uh, then I've I've assaulted a lot of women. So have I. Well, not your parents, but my family. I don't think I've helped your family. You mentioned one of, the, one of the they tried to take your job or something. <laughs> they you they you try to do it or something or sign or they. Not, not, not every woman thinking crazy like they do. now. He's not working, he's not going to be at the job for six months.
was it? Have a doctor degree? I thought it was just for um, your race or skin color, not the end of your education level. So I'm guessing you two weren't friends on the job site. So has he been replaced by a more competent woman yet? I'm not sure one will be coming around eventually. I I said competent. Yeah. Are you the boss now? You're like equal with her or above her? Yeah, you need you need smart questions like the mo like the molecule question. A few months ago, I was wondering how I asked him on Twitter how I don't know, to get to make molecules and how that makes them different things, like how air and air can make water and stuff and all that stuff. Of course, he thought I really thought the difference was. I was thinking what I was thinking with because I kind of guess everyone knows the differences. At least what the nose will do. But. How they combine together to make the com, com make the com or the compounds? So, 
So let the neutron the the neutron the neutron the neutron the neutron the neutron the So can it any So can any atom come together on your one? Do you have any other questions or smart questions from people? Motion laws or something different. No idea what that meant, but I held. I, I, <laughs> you have any other? Before we log off. Opportunity to eat uh, go after every, everyone, and uh, everyone. And, uh, <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> go after yourself. Care about the dog?
comedy. Com this has been the comedy corner. <laughs> right, well, with that, I think we should be logging off. This has been Vendetta 88. See y'all next time. Remember, enjoy the randomness. Welcome, everyone, to Talking Times with Caffeine, Season 2. Today, we got a new co-host today. Introduce yourself. Hi. I'm here. Actually, I'm right here. Hey, guys, it's Wealthy War 3587. Um, yeah, I'm here. I'm here! So, yeah. Uh, our main subject today... So what's this bit about caffeine? Oh. We... <laughs> Time of caffeine. It was the original co my original co host's name. Just came up, came up with it. Oh. Right. What we're to do from KFC. Generic Christmas mug, generic drink. As in water. Nice. Yeah, my original co host quit for four episodes, came up with the title. And I kept it because it's my pod, it's, it's my, on my channel, so I, I ran with it. Eh, take it and run with it, why not? Yeah. I mean, it uh, works. Alright, then we got at least, two subjects to talk, at least two subjects to talk about. The first is what we were having problems with all day and yesterday technical difficulties. Like, your mic, for example. Is that loud enough? Yeah. To make a technical difficulty? Yeah. So tell them about your your, your brand new super mic you got. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, a couple days ago, kind of a spoiler for my viewers on my channel, but I purchased a um, professional level recording mic. Um for purposes like this and kind of record things and stuff. Um, didn't get the pop filter with it, which was dumb idea on my part, but eh, I guess. One thing at a time. Did get windscreen. Yeah. See if I liked it first. Uh, it, it's a nice mic, if it would work. The issue with that is, uh, mass production doesn't always make things perfect, blah blah blah, and happy ending for, well, not me. Um, Windows doesn't register the device on any computer, and I don't have an actual mixer that I can use, so... Until then, I, yeah, I'm pretty much screwed. Yeah, so we're gonna step back. Use your old-fashioned headset and stuff until then. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm back to the default crap. Yeah. It's actually pretty nice. Gonna this get, is a so you get, fairly high-end headset. So you're gonna get a new one? I mean, or a new mic, or does it get money back? Um... I'm hoping to exchange the mic, because that's an expensive mic. <laughs> I mean, for as little money as I make on YouTube, that, that mic is a huge investment. And so is the yeah. headphones that I bought that are coming. <laughs> At least you get but, some money off of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a partnership, I have views. Mike again. Well, kind of. Well, hopefully, you're appearing on this podcast. We'll send two more people your way. Hey! Uh, All I can do is help. Uh, and then, before we start this podcast, Skype for both of us. Is our computer is first my computer and his computer. Just. Pff, 
Interesting. <laughs> so, if you guys have any technical difficulties, ever say so in the comments below what your biggest headaches, headaches, headaches were about this stuff. Alright, now, but it's the about. Yeah, go, go, go on. Go, go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, what was I saying? Train of thought lost. Anyway, uh, go, I remember. Go ahead and uh, tell us if you've had a technical difficulty, or if you have, and maybe if someone out there in this vast you know, world even can help you with your problems. Even if it's as simple as you kept your mic on mute the whole time you're playing the game. Oh, uh, don't you hate it when that happens? Like you're a quarter. Hour-long special and your microphone's on mute. It's like, uh, I've. It's only really bad I've when you not... when you go through a save state halfway through your thing and you can't. You either get to reset your whole game, start over again, or you just gotta go with it and do it post commentary. I've done that. What post commentary? Well. Not post commentary, I restart the whole frickin' thing. But that's just me, I'm not. If they're not for the fuck it, then. They're not there. Oh, that was terse. Uh, Alright. Now we have another type to talk about the Xbox versus the PlayStation versus Nintendo. Yeah, Xbox versus PS4. This is raging all over. Um, so what side are you on? Before I go there, um, I'll go ahead and read off a couple of things. Uh, <laughs> the PS4 sold out the pre-release first. That's just an interesting thing. Xbox One a little bit. Um, currently, the PlayStation 4 has gone over 13 and a half million units sold worldwide. Everywhere. Nice. And Xbox One shows under 10 million being shipped to stores. So, general public seems to love the PS4 better, I'm guessing. Um, Xbox, Xbox 4. Yeah, look out for that one <laughs> in the far future. Xbox One did do a recent price drop. Um, to try to catch up. But it's still really expensive, pretty much. Um, as far as design... <laughs> The PS4 definitely has a slimmer, more streamlined look. It's not as plagued, plagued by fans. It's not a fan every corner. Um, the controllers, they're more like the classic NES controller that your that controllers came from, as well as, you know, the PS3, the PS3, and... Yeah, PlayStation controllers in general. One thing Xbox has though is Connect. This is huge. Connect has such an enormous great uh, things that you can do. It keeps really keeps it interesting. But you know, I'm not sure what your guys' take on that. Is. If you Xbox or Connect, or so if you're a Microsoft or a Sony person, or if you do console gaming, I'm actually more of a PC gamer myself, but I prefer Sony. Um, that's my thing. Um, some of the menu on it definitely looks easier to use on the 
place. The Xbox definitely looks more like Windows 8, the menu on it. Yeah, I've tried Windows 8 one time. It was kind of complicated, somewhat. But... It's definitely um, a jump. The the um, store has a much more classic-ish layout than you know the new really heavy Windows kind of thing. Um, as far as the CPU, they're both running eight core AMD's, which are wow. Um, but the graphics card, it's about the same thing. Uh, Radeon 87,000 series, 8 gig DDR, DDR3 RAM for the Xbox One with 32 megabytes of ES RAM. The PS4 is roughly the same thing, Radeon 80,000 series, <laughs> but with 8 right. gigabytes. You're looking at all this up right now? Or he's got all this memorized? No, I've had to pull the uh, 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. Uh, both, use AMD, both using AMD GPUs. So, so you have, it's so you have, you which one you like better. Personal, personally, I like... I'm more between the Xbox and the PlayStation. I'm more of the PlayStation because of the games I play. I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, <laughs> so, so, until, until Xbox line. comes up with Kingdom Hearts, then pff, it's really out of the <laughs> for me. Um, some games you can only get from Xbox. Halo 5. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Quantum Break. Um, and it's just three of them. Yeah. Those are some of Microsoft's largest headers for exclusively Xbox One. Uh, PS4. I'm personally excited about some of these. I started for a season that's coming out next year, some 2015, from January to December. I don't know. Naughty Dog hasn't released a ton cool. on it. Uh, the early 1986. My, my news. PlayStation is still. I, mean, <laughs> I think I've got three yet. I'm still on. I'm still on the two. <laughs> so my my new. I PS1, PS2, and PS3. Yeah, yeah. my new system. Really? My new system right now, current system, is is the Wii. Not even the Wii U, the Wii. <laughs> oh, um, as far as what Xbox One has right now, there's Project Spark. That's a huge community thing, and very similar so to... are any of these games that you're, are you interested in any of these games? Just catch your eye? These or? are just games. These are just nothing, some of the games nothing, that they nothing, had nothing, exclusive. Nothing that you want to play? Or just... Not a ton. Um, there is Forza Horizon 2. That's a game for, like, racing games. A lot of people that like... Similar to Need for Speed, Forza Motorsport Five though is definitely the favorite. Also, you have Halo: The Master Chief Collection, which who doesn't love Halo? And The Last of Us Remastered. I mean, anyone that doesn't love The Last of Us is not real. Yeah. So what? So what do you on your? What do you on your channel? Um, I want to do mainly PC gaming. Uh, You'll, I have a couple of things coming up that I intend to kick off starting with the new year. Um, one of them being a talk show um, that the server for was generously provided by Domination VBS hosting. Uh, go to dominationvbs.com to get your server. You know, pretty cheap. Good service. Nice people. Cool. Give, just give him a shout out. Well, on, you know I have to. On the most, <laughs> They're giving me the server. On the most popular podcast in all of Vendilia, Ohio. There's probably the only one. 
Um, as for uh, PS4, some of the best leading games are Destiny. That one's just in the past two months since the release. The constant rave for it is insane. It's the gameplay is much is fairly similar to that of Call of Duty meets Battlefield and meets whoa. Also, Criterion's Need for Speed Rivals is classic, awesome racing game for PS4. I mean, it's PS it, pretty much correct game. All around. Number one is the and uh, I'm going to take this from kind of a quote uh, from Ken Oki. Uh, way is always the biggest determining determining factor should be which games you want to play and which platform have them. What the same with that? PC, go down on freaking PC, I don't care! Yeah, most of the games PS4. I play are on PC too. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, if, like, you want to play Uncharted 4, don't get an Xbox One, I mean, it's not coming out to it anytime soon. That's the Sony thing. Alright, so, what's, what's that, what's that of the four-way war are you on? The PC -er, uh, Xbox -er, uh, Sony -er, or Nintendo -er? or are you a combo <laughs> of things? And just like you like three of them, and the other one just can just say screw itself. Uh, honest, without Nintendo, there would be no games. Honestly, I mean that's what started the whole thing. Well, not really, to kind of well. Actually, Pong did. Well, yeah, I had before I had an old Atari system back when I was a little kid. Nintendo. I have one too. One Atari. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I played had, the other day. Got an Atari and then, then a Nintendo, then an SNES, then a GameCube, then a PlayStation Two, and then a Wii. <laughs> oh, plus some game uh -huh. always along the way too. Every single game we ever ever model made. So except for the new ones, I didn't got the three D or three uh, DS or anything like that. Those are Nintendo DS. That's totally different. <laughs> um, but honestly, I do mostly PC gaming. I do enjoy console gaming, and as far as consoles go. I would stick to Sony versus Microsoft any day. It really depends on the game. Like, if there's a game I want to play and it's only on Xbox, I'll play a freaking Xbox. I just want to play a game. Yeah, game, games trump systems overall. The game you want to play, usually the game that badly, you'll get the system. Just for that game. Yeah, that's pretty much what the... That I read off. Come to, it, it's a matter of your opinion, your choice, what game you play. So you know what? Go ahead and leave a like and a comment down below saying, "Hey, this is what I prefer." Do it. Yeah, I only have two games on my Wii right now. That's Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. <laughs> Beat both of them. Off screen, off screen, of course. Just take my word for it. Deep in thought. I'm not. <laughs> uh, so, anything else you want to talk about before we log off? Um. Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. See this guy right there? On the other side, that side of the screen for me, or that side, one of those sides. 
great guy. Subscribe to his channel. See this guy? Right here talking. Subscribe to his channel too. Did that just get, you just had to click his picture. And below his yeah, picture. Yeah, click, click. Click on me. <laughs> um, below my picture is that. Is your. Right, 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 Twitter? Right. Yep. Uh, Twitter is at Wolfie Wolf 587 I try to keep that fairly updated and generic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should probably do that more often, so, too. And I mainly use my Twitter to announce that I gotta do videos. Uh, <laughs> so all my followers will know that. That's one key feature of Twitter. Um, so... Oh, there is one other thing I would like to remind these people before they go. I'm with you, City Five Eighty Seven. You're all people. I don't think I have to tell you this again, but unless you're not, you're angry for being a person. Unless you're aliens or animals watching this, I appreciate you watching this video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below just for that. I mean, you know, we're both here, we're both trying to entertain you people. And it's not YouTube's for overall. Entertain so, the mindless masses. I mean, you're mindless or anything. <laughs> I'm mindless. I'm entertaining myself. Uh, Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, Have fun. Everybody, as always. I'm not sure. See ya, and as always, uh, screen. Enjoy. Stay awesome. The that's that. That's my thing. Stay awesome. Yeah. Mine's, mine's enjoy <laughs> and, the, and the people. My, mine's yeah. Mine's. I always remind them, they're people. I don't know why I have to tell you this every time. Until the next time, stay awesome. I always that, that's me. I already said my thing, you know what it is. Bye! Hello everybody, my name is Dr. McMahon. I am a physics nerd. And with me is Dr. Drew. Thank you very much for joining me here. And also we are guests on the channel of Vendelia998. And we also have another guest with us who is currently, well, apparently, shooting social justice warriors. Which is fun. <laughs> But anyway, thank you very much for having us on, Mr. Vandalia 1998. It is a pleasure to have you here. I don't know if we have any guests watching at this moment that would be up to Vandalia, because I am unable to keep track of that. However, I am currently on the watch page, so if you guys are chatting at all, um, when you start messages, you can ask questions in there as well. And on Twitter, and we just tag either Vandalia 1998, or you can tag me, uh, uh, which is physics nerd YT, and you'll be able to communicate back and forth with us, and we'll be able to see your questions live, and we'll be able to answer them when it's appropriate. So do get those questions. I do have one question that I have already in my this particular question. Uh, this question is from Peter Hansen. Um, I think it's a Google Plus page, but it could be YouTube. And he asks... So I heard a video on Feynman, something about antiprotons being protons, or some elements, going back in time, and I forgot which video it was, too. Sad face. So I went and thought a bit, and if that was true, could gravity also do that, so as to create a negative vehicle needed for warp travel? Also, you mentioned that a warp drive would have to destroy and create space. The explanations I saw on the al drive, uh, the warp drive, was that it would bend. Anyways, I enjoy your videos and hope you make more. <laughs> okay. Uh, first off, uh, antiprotons and protons going back in time. I'm unaware of this particular point. Tachyons allegedly travel faster than the speed of light reverse through time, so they're going backwards in time. Um, I'd actually have to research a bit on the protons and antiprotons going back in time. I don't think that's actually what they do, I'm even hypothetical, but I could be wrong on that. Um, there are, and the reason behind this uh, particular 
discrepancy with my knowledge versus somebody else's knowledge is that I don't always keep up to date with every single little thing in physics. And it's super hard considering the sheer number of physicists that are constantly coming out with new th hypotheses, new theories, etc. And it is incredibly difficult to keep up. So I miss a lot of things from time to time. Um, regarding the destruction of space that is actually a, I want to say it's a Viridian slip, but it's not. It's a difference in terminology. Uh, to the layperson, you're actually going through and you're warping it. So yeah, you're compressing space in front of you with the warp drive, actually taking the space behind you and expanding it. So that would allow to create faster than light travel. How do you require a subspace where you have your own pocket uh, space inside of space, and then you just move uh, the rest of the universe around you in that sense of and expansion or destruction and creation, whichever phrase you prefer to use. And Peter Hansen also asks, uh, dark matter and energy and inflation, they seem to be bound together with time dilation. Could it be that dark matter is simply the universe running on different clock speeds where the time runs slower inside a galaxy compared to the empty space in between galaxies? Um, in actuality, there are several physicists that don't subscribe to the dark matter and dark energy um, theory, I should say. And I'm one of them, actually. The whole nature of dark matter and dark energy is like, hey, it's there. We can't see it, but it's there. And I like to consider it to be, you know, it, like a description of saying, hey, there's magic here. Look at this, magic. And that's because we can't account for it. We can't detect it whatsoever. So it's just there. And the whole nature many physicists and scientists give uh, for the quote unquote existence of dark matter, for example, is that um, if you have a bit of it and you drop it on the earth, it would just go right through the earth and it would go through your hands and light wouldn't bounce off of it so you wouldn't be able to see it, etc., etc. Now that sounds a lot like it just doesn't exist. And there's other ways to describe it, such as uh, the differential warping of space time. We could be very well incorrect as to how gravity itself functions. And this particular instance, if gravity is nothing more than a pull on space time, what the hell is gravity? Uh, if you particularly think about just a warp in space time, if you take a piece of cloth and you pinch it, then your pinched cloth actually traverses all the way through the fabric. So you move and affect the entirety of the fabric. So one thing in the universe can actually affect something millions of light years away from it, even hundreds of billions of light years away. So in, a, in essence, the Oort cloud, where the comets come from, isn't too much of a stretch to understand that the sun, the sun our star, is keeping it all.
Uh, let's see. Uh, try turning your Skype sound up with the volume mixer. Lamont. Okay. We... Is uh, the YouTube live stream set to capture uh, system audio? This is why I don't bother with live streams. Anyway. It can be uh, a bit hard to get working properly. Yeah, well, they're not even worth it when you don't have a good broadband. I'm especially anti screwed. See, I can hear now two huzzah, so you guys can hear us now. Fantastic! Yay! Are you here able to hear everybody fun? I can hear everybody. I can hear everyone. Oh, I'm, I'm Sometimes I hear people. myself. Oh well. <laughs> it's set to capture sexy audio. Woo! <laughs> but anyway, um, to the person that asked what the square root of this YouTube video would be, I'm assuming that the video comes out in 720p, it would be 26.83281573. There you go. Quick math. <laughs> I'm sorry, did nobody expect that one? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to write it off as stupid. As well done. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, on Twitter, uh, Bill Thompson, <laughs> Bill Thompson three two one on Twitter uh, says at physics nerd yt and at keyblade underscore knight, do you believe in life on Earth? Uh, yes, I believe there is life on Earth. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. though, as um, our scientific research has shown so far, we have yet to find any intelligent life on Earth. So far, we found on Earth was. Uh, uh, mostly amoebas and some plankton and uh, some very basic proto-life uh, of multicellular life, but that's about it. Um, intelligence on this on this particular planet that you're referring to as Earth, um, it's basically mostly just the equivalent of uh, a, a jar of gak, pretty much. Nickelby and gak. But that's all. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard Chris ones due to the lack of audio um, regarding Peter Hans' question. And I'm thinking that if you guys weren't able to hear us until now, uh, I don't think so. Well, did they hear the number? They heard the square root of the YouTube video, at the very least. <laughs> Unless, of course, you know, the square root of the YouTube video would actually be from a 1080p. Um, so if it's 1080p, well, I, I Google! Uh, 1080p would be. I'm going to round up and just say 33, but that's actually incorrect. It's uh, actually 32.86335345. I had to Google it to get that answer. <laughs> Google which uh, the uh, square root? Yep. Let's see. Uh, Question, and I'm going to say it weighs five point 
9,736 by 1,024 kilograms. Or if you want, let's see. I see 13,107 with 23 zeros after it in pounds. That's how much the earth weighs. A fuck ton. A lot, yeah. And Rim Nameless says, Missed a large chunk. Yes, I realize I did not calculate the mass of my own testicles when calculating the mass of the earth. Sorry about that. But my balls do take up 99% of the mass of the universe. And it's so bright, it sustains all life on Earth. Just not the intelligent life, because it just doesn't come about. <laughs> I haven't figured out why yet. Uh, you hear about the Swedes? One of the political parties there putting up a... A bill to ban urines? Oh god, what? yes. You have to sit on the pee that, in that's Sweden. Gold. <laughs> in Sweden now you have to sit down the pee. Because there's two different uh, groups of feminists with that uh, with that whole uh, movement and that's also in the United States as well because they say long bathroom lines for women is sexist. But they say Men peeing standing up is a sign of sexual aggression, which I, I always figured it was just me taking a leak real quick and getting the fuck out. <laughs> There's other ones that are claiming that when men sit down to pee, you know, you sit down, put your junk in the pool, and start to urinate, that it helps you empty your bladder. Unfortunately, they're wrong according to every fucking evolutionary biologist that's ever freaking existed that's heard of us. <laughs> I think they actually empty their bladder to the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it ends up uh, being harder to empty your bladder than if you're standing it's up. It's like how the dangling on the bowl. You know, if the bowl's like a shallow bowl, yeah, sometimes it's... It's just a fact that our body's physiology is different. For women, yes, sitting down or squatting is how you pee. But take a look at it like a... Look at the dogs, for example. I'm gonna say, hey, mutt, you can't hike your leg up to pee. That's sexual aggression. And it also helps you empty your bladder if you squat and you have the dog, you know, being trained to sit down and squat to pee and it just keeps it its face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that mental image just occurred to <laughs> me. The Cory Baster asks, uh, "Do you believe animal testing is necessary?" Oh God, Pete is gonna lynch me. Yes, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. I mean, animal testing with fucking like makeup products and shampoos and stuff like that. I I don't agree with because I mean every time every. Every time I think of an animal testing with makeup products and all that crap, I end up thinking of uh, a chimpanzee with, like, really light hair and all these perms and stuff in it, wearing makeup that looks like it's a hooker that caters specifically to clowns walking around in high heels. <laughs> That's just a testamental image I think when I'm thinking about that, but... Um, for actual scientific research, <laughs> for actual scientific research, I'm going to have to say, yeah, it, it is definitely the best thing because um, with animal research, we have a serum that can basically increase your lifespan by fourfold. We've uh, discovered so much about cancer and cancer treatments, uh, various surgical implementations, uh, including even cyborg technology uh, for. The transhumanists out there, 
and we've discovered uh, various things such as heart disease, uh, various different types of organ failure, the involvement of telomeres, and the reprogrammed death that people have, and all sorts of different medical advancements that we have, including cybernetics. So animal testing is a necessary evil, in my opinion. Unfortunately, it's not a necessary evil for them to test makeup products to make a chimpanzee look like it's ready to go sell its ass in the street corner. <laughs> There you go. I always wanted to get Just AIDS from a chimp. Yes. <laughs> Just a question. What's the what's the chimpanzee gonna do with the money? Give it to its pimp, of course. You know that guy in the white lab coat. Duh. <laughs> Where else does the money go? Let's see, what's going to win Best Picture, also from Corey Baxter? Uh, I'm going to assume it's the picture of my balls that I currently have up on Xtube. Um, but don't go looking for it, because, uh, I mean, I am gay, so unless you're into that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I don't know the balls, but... If you don't care to see another huge or see, potentially see a video of a dude shoving a big rubber dick up his ass, you don't want to go look for that picture. Until then, go over and when you like Nicki Minaj and just bask in the whole. Just warning, 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 warning. Before you go off, off do this, I have to say, um, don't get too close because we know what happens when you get too close to an object of a huge mass, and gravity becomes in extremes. Okay. You will be sucked in, and you will be crushed in the singularity. You're screwed at that point. Although, uh, if you do get close, like if you're trying to have sex with her, for example, I mean, if you're actually having sexual intercourse with someone with an ass, that mass... If, if you have sex with her and you're kind of like a minute in and you're just going there and in, in, in like maybe 30 seconds to a minute later you're finally finished and you come back out it's like a damn week you got all these fucking flying cars everywhere zipping around like the hell how long fuck you person who is able to have sex holding the current record of uh, sexual intercourse for 200,000 years. Well, I was busy. And then by your perspective, uh, it, was, you know, it only took like a minute. <laughs> um, bro. I'm saying a minute, man. I was going to speaking of Nicki and Minaj's name, I'll play, I'll play uh, yeah. I'm on the side of a shit. And then they're running around with Nicki Minaj when this house is disturbing every time I see it. My straight jacket today is made of gold and full mane. I'm not because I'm white. My bad. Man, we're running out of questions. Really quick. Questions. We need to wrap. Hey, the more questions we get, the more funny shit we can come up with. Whether you're serious or not. And it makes this more entertaining. It does. For, for, for everybody. Absolutely. Maybe I can shake with my airsoft and shoot, shoot myself. myself. That's always fun. fun. If I can make a suggestion on where to shoot yourself with the airsoft gun, uh, left testicle. <laughs> I've actually been shot in the balls by a CO2 pistol before. Just... 
Hey, uh, something, something funny to share with you guys. I had a friend that said, ask me out. Um, Laura came asked me on a date. And it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was my response exactly. <laughs> Here you go again. This is 575 FPS. It, like, not even two inches away from my toe. Hey. <laughs> Ow. Oh, that, that one, one actually heard that. Okay, I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> oh, tons. I actually play them really quick. It's super easy. It, it, it's really super easy to get a feminist to shut up. Because with the uh, uh, Bathinet on H-Chan, H-chan, for example. There are so many feminists and social justice warriors that are afraid of getting doxxed. And they try not to use their real names so much that all you have to do is just say, please just go the fuck away and throw out one of the real names, either their first or their last name, and just send them on their way. And after that, they block you. I've had a couple that begged me to not release the information I just gathered on them. I, I don't dox people. I really don't. But it's one of those things, I mean, if they're so worried about getting doxed that they're going to start going and throwing a huge bitch fest using flawed data and emotions and appeal to emotions, then they really should clean house a bit. It's even more funny when they try to dox me, or they threaten to dox me, I should say. They're like, I'm gonna dox you! Like, congratulations, my shit's already public. i am already been doxed twice. <laughs> I mean, go on. <laughs> Have at it. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, there were a couple of people I was in a Skype call with. They were saying, oh, we're gonna DDoS you and make... Make, make, make it so you can't, can't do anything. Well, well my IP shows up as I'm somewhere in the general area of Iraq and Afghanistan. Who should be? I'm I'm in the mid northwest of the U.S. So. But, yeah, go ahead. See how that works. I just use fucking Tor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, every single time they're like, this is his IP number, this is his information. <laughs> He's got a proxy. <laughs> a great way to get people's IP is having to go into a Minecraft server. Um, actually, a great way to get another person's IP number is to go to a particular website website service that I will not be mentioning on here, because I don't want it abused, I'm sorry. And it'll give you a series of links for you to click. Well, not for you to click, but to give you, for you to give somebody else. And you can just say, hey, this is funny as hell, let's check this out. And they click it, and it gets their IP number, and it emails it to you. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's really fun. Yeah. You get a bunch of you get a bunch of idiots onto a Skype call. And don't tell me that. What's this whole thing? Upset with you. Like the Ralph report, for example, is getting DDoS quite a bit. Nate Chan got DDoS quite a bit. The Ralph report and Nate uh, Chan has been getting DDoS a bit. And, and I don't understand the, the whole deal with social, social justice, justice warriors when they they, they, they say stuff like, like I'm gonna dox her, I'm gonna dox you, or I'm gonna DDoS you, I'm gonna hack you, and this and that. And if, if they, they don't, don't do that, that after it's happening, they brag about being the one that's causing it. And I'm just over here thinking, I'm like, okay, number one, a DDoS isn't a hack. 
I mean, you can do that with a script. Congratulations. You got something that even a five-year-old can do. And number two, if you're an actual hacker, one of the things you don't do is around telling everybody the motherfucking son saying, I'm going to hack you. I'm going to hack you. I mean, every time I see that, I just end up thinking, like, shh, 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 shh. it's okay, you're just 12. You still need permission to get on Disney.com. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. I mean, real hackers, uh, with any skill, don't go around telling people they're going to fucking hack them. They just fucking do it. <laughs> okay? And people who are going to do doxing... They, they don't, don't go around saying, I'm going to dox you. Because I think what they're doing is, I don't think the social justice warriors that are threatening this kind of shit actually know how to do it. So they're just trying to basically make it out so that you, they can say this threat and try to make you afraid and silence you. I mean, there's a few that can. I mean, there's a few social justice warriors who are idiots. Sorry to say, they... they have this notion that social justice is a thing, but I'd rather people be able to call me a faggot, be able to be able to call them a fucktard, than to have it so that nobody can say what they want to say. Limit freedom of speech. Because I've read 1984, and I personally don't think that's a good idea to live under. But yeah, hack, real hackers don't end up telling everybody what their game plan is, or their operations, or how they're doing things, who their, their targets, targets are, etc. Et and namely, they don't... If you're a smart hacker, you don't hack from your own fucking house. Your own home IP number. Your own home internet connection, you don't do that. It's just that simple. Because if you do it from your home, it allows you to be wide open to be traced back to your origin. More technical difficulties, it cut out with the ass conversation. Stutters until it stops altogether. Has has happened every time I refresh, just a heads up. seem to be having some minor difficult technical difficulties. My not. Uh, I just noticed you got my YouTube or my uh, my Twitter handle wrong. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Physics nerd, YT. But anyway, but yeah, hackers don't talk about their uh, operations and what they're doing. Uh, I mean, real hackers, at least. Yeah, yeah script kitties. Well, well, script kitties, yes. Uh, the script kitties are idiots. They don't have any real skill. Yeah. So what they end up doing is uh, the, the script kitties are the type of people who will go off. Yeah, the script kitties are the type of people who run off and download like. Uh, fucking sub seven or back orifice or some shit. He's a Trojan virus from many ages past, and wonder why uh, nobody's able to be hacked. <laughs> like uh, because antiviruses are a thing, <laughs> and they're common. A really good one to use. Yeah, it takes a little bit to figure your way around like that. Cali Linux. Yeah, Cali Linux is Cali Linux is an old uh, system. I'm gonna have to agree there. But uh, with Cali Linux, you can, if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty, you could use like any derivative of Ubuntu. And do the same thing. You just have to install the same software. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's just that just comes pretty much pre-built with all the nice shit on it that you want to use including stuff for uh sql injection and uh fucking database table you know sql table dumps and all that shit You, you get Kali Linux and you go to your local McDonald's with free Wi-Fi. Yep. Or you take a plane actually. Holder. I actually prefer to not use you know spaces that have security cameras because what happens is if you're using somebody's uh, Wi-Fi that has a security camera. They can track it back to that particular IP address and figure out, oh, you're at that per hacker is at McDonald's. It's okay. So they get to McDonald's and the hack happened at such and such time, and they check the security cameras, and they can see whoever's there with a laptop or a cell phone. You can you can do hacks with a fucking Android device. Okay. Sorry, Apple. You suck. But you can do all this, and if they see someone using the Wi-Fi and during this period of time. They'll look about when the attack started and when it ended, if there's more than one person there with a laptop or a cell phone. So they'll figure out when the attack started and when it ended, and then they'll check that time period. And the person that ended up closing the laptop or looking like they're finished will be the person that they look at. So you actually want to do something away from security cameras. Um, so some low-budget uh, libraries, for example, or you can find some uh, open Wi-Fi uh, around like neighborhoods, and you can just leech off of somebody else's, you know, some poor saps Wi Fi for. Yeah, there's a little always some of Wi Fi. Yeah. A lot of people don't secure the network properly, if at all. If you, if you really want to look for open Wi Fi networks, including networks who have hidden SSIDs, then what you want to do is with your Android device, install Wi Fi Bofum, and you'll be able to see the network IDs, including those that are hidden. <laughs> Um, and on top of that, if you really wanted to get... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This went way out of fucking topic. We're talking about hacking when it's supposed to be about physics. My bad. Hacking, hacking, hacking computers, computers, hacking. Right physics has something to do with um, computers. Computers has something to do with gaming. Gaming has a lot to do with hacking. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, uh, Wi-Fi faux phone, question mark, LMAO. Yes, Wi-Fi faux phone. It is an actual Android app. If you have a uh, iPhone or iPad, you would need to jailbreak it and install Cydia, and you would have one of the, you would have Wi-Fi faux phone available for you. It used to be available in the Apple App Store back uh, seven, almost eight years ago, I think, Some, somewhere in that ballpark of time ago. It's been a long time. Um, but they removed it from uh, the Apple App Store. It used to cost five bucks on iOS. But, yeah, Wi Fi Faux Phone. Uh, it lets you see also. Oh, one, one thing I want to talk to you about Wi Fi Faux Phone this is no hacking whatsoever. Um, if you download Wi Fi Faux Phone and install it onto your uh, mobile device, what I want you to do is to look through, uh, have it open for showing you the hidden networks. Uh, hidden SSIDs and all that shit, and look at the radar and walk right into a fucking Walmart. <laughs> because it's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I Walmart, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm about to explain what you say. Is it say I've tested it in multiple Walmarts. When I lived in Huntsville, Alabama, um, I checked the Walmart there. And that was back when I had an iPod Touch, second generation, when I last bought the bitch. Um, the uh, Wi-Fi phone phone program. And lately, I've also tested it here in uh, Phoenix as well as in Mesa. And the same thing is ha it happens with each Walmart that I've been to. When ha you know the Walmart logo that looks kind of like a weird-ass asterisk? Yeah. Okay. The Wi-Fi network, the, the hidden network, also looks exactly like that um, logo. Well, I am not kidding. Uh, I would actually challenge anybody that is interested in finding out if I'm telling the truth or not to actually, actually do this yourself. The app for Wi Fi and phone phone is free, and to walk into Walmart is free too because you don't have a cover charge to get in. <laughs> so, just 
walk on in with Wi-Fi phone on your Android device for jailbroken iOS device and uh, look up the hidden SSIDs. See, uh, Dr. Drew says BRB, P greater than food. It says, I'm going to turn on them. Um, Jesse Stone says, hey, I wonder if y'all know the pictures are still a little weird. Um, actually, actually no. Uh, that's, that's because, because uh, Vendelia, Vendelia 1998 is the one working, working behind, behind the scenes, scenes in order to get, get everything running with this podcast. So, he the creative image editor. All the images that you see, um, except for the, Im- the pictures of us in their individual boxes, is done by, um, basically everything is done by me except those pictures inside the boxes. So, uh, I didn't touch that. I don't have any control of that at all times. <laughs> well, he, he's, he's doing okay. I mean, he's got to change all this on the fly. Cause I mean, this, this is live, including the picture you see. <laughs> I, I'm watching it live, and it's talking about you testing it at Walmart in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, there's lag. Yeah, we're but, uh, at like uh, two minute lag time. Somewhere. <sighs> we have a question from Twitter. How would you go about creating a distributed denial of service? Uh, DDoS. I am not going to touch that with a 50 foot fucking hole. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to give out how to hack. I'll give you details about what hackers do a little bit, like real hackers and some of the stuff that we use, but. I'm not going to give you details on how to bring down a website or deface any sites or use SQL injections and things like that. I'm not going to touch that. Or we're going to bypass YouTube and Google's uh, passwords in order to break into any Google account you want, gain access to someone's Gmail account and basically everything else, including their PayPal and uh, Payza accounts. And just basically get everything about their entire life from a simple bypass password. I ain't teaching you that either. Well, that's actually something I'm reporting to Google. As far as what real hackers do, well, actually, I can't say that. Never mind. Okay, ignore that. I'd have army down on me like nothing. I mean, I, I won't even say that I'm a real hacker. I mean, <laughs> I mean, in my eyes, I'm not. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I can pr- probably do some pretty bad damage, but <laughs> I mean, I. In my eyes, a hacker is somebody that is basically the definition of a cracker. Uh, somebody that breaks into some place to be malicious. And I'm not the malicious type at all. Well, I'd have I mean, to I, say the hacker would depend on what kind of thing they're doing. Um, my because head is white. I refuse to change it. There's, there's white hat, black hat, and gray hat. And a, a lot of them are, um, a lot of ones you see from white hats are hired by, like, FBI to investigate stuff. Like, um, they recently did with the Sony hack that was released about, estimated to do about, how much was it? A couple billion dollars in damage, I think? 
Um, I, I really, I really don't, don't know. know. I mean, not, not every white hat is employed, employed by the government or for security firms. firms. Some, Some of us just do our, do our own thing. Like, for example, I'm a theory yeah. that does this. Yeah. So, I mean, but, but um, some, some of us just, like, 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 like that whole thing, thing about bypassing Google, Google passwords, passwords, for example, it's something I can do right now, now but it's something I've also reported to Google. Google. This is something, I, I found this accidentally, <laughs> oddly, <laughs> oddly enough, um, but I reported it to Google, giving them the details of how to do it, and telling them, hey, this is a problem, and I gave them that information a couple of days ago. So I'm still waiting on them to fix the exploit if they haven't already. But, yeah, m m most hackers are not going to be using, like, fucking sub-7 shit, okay? <laughs> um, I've had this uh, fucking social justice warrior that had sent me they were saying stuff like I'm gonna hack you and they sent me a fucking exe file I'm like oh I already know what this is <laughs> <laughs> so I downloaded it and I'm like okay well what's this supposed to do so no, it's a nice game you're into Gamergate so check this out I'm like okay whatever fuck lord <laughs> I'm on Linux you bitch <laughs> <laughs> Try again. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even fucking. I don't even install line. Okay. <laughs> that, that's, that's that's not even hack. That's, that's like B grade, grade bullshit. <laughs> it's like yeah, download this thing. It's good. Trust me. Yeah. Here, download this file. That's going to uh, uh, quit. No, what really is funny is when they give it to you in a text file and tell you to change it to a dot bat. Tell you to take, change it to a batch file. It's like, oh come on, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, shit, Lord, they don't work on my system either. Try again. <laughs> what's uh, what's wrong? You don't know shell scripting? Oh, poor baby. <laughs> okay, so so did we so now we're like. So, so we start, start from, from time warps to gaming to hacking to, hacking, to making fun of script kids. Probably because I'm here. Yeah. You know, the same, the, the same episode, the same hour. Well, well, technically, this is a science podcast, and, you know, computer you science is a thing, so, so fuck it, let's talk. Uh, um, oh, oh, and we can't forget animal testing. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, can't forget, forget that one. So, another thing I forgot to mention with the recent hack of Sony is, um, never... Ever, ever, n never, 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 never leave something saying you did it. Like a thing that says what group you're from, or... Yeah, that reminds me of uh, Wormers, for example. The hacker Wormers. Uh, that, this particular hacker had a girlfriend, I think it was in Australia. And she had... She had taken a picture of herself, uh, not her face or anything, but just her little over half. And she had this nice set of tits, right? And underneath her tits was this paper that had something like, uh, hacked by wormers, right? So when he defaced some political websites that he didn't agree with, he put that image on there, but he didn't remove the metadata from the image itself. So they managed to figure out, okay, well, this is his girlfriend. This is where she's at. <laughs> Due to GPS and shit on the phone when you take a picture. They get to her, they ask her, well, who the hell is this dude? And, and, and lo and behold, you get busted. Uh, that's something else. Uh, if you are being malicious, don't trust anyone and shut the fuck up. And remove your fucking metadata. Please. 
And it's one of those things yeah. I fucking found about social justice warriors. Yeah, they have I mean, stuff that tells you exactly where you're at. I mean, I've had social justice warriors where I look for their username and I find them on Photo Bucket, right? There's not really much information you can get from Photo buff- Bucket for from the average person, aside from just their pictures that you look at. But, but most people don't oh, bother to so well, well, the, the average, average person doesn't, doesn't know. They, they just, just look, look at the picture, picture and like, oh, fuck, okay. But, but if you don't remove, remove your metadata med- 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 and you get somebody that has the knowledge to look into this shit, shit, then what's, what's happening it? is, oh, we, we got, got your address now. We know where you live from your pictures. So they think they're safe just because they have only pictures of themselves, and it's not really true. And also, turn off they your goddamn location did, data. They actually turn did that uh, to uh, one of the Mythbuster people and found out where he lived and everything from it. Uh-huh. So, back to the telling the world who hacked what um, this is reading straight from their little warning thing. Hacked by hashtag GOP or Guardians of Peace, not, you know, the Republicans. Warning, we've already warned you. This is just the beginning. We'll continue until our requests be met. We've obtained all your internal data, including your secrets and top secrets. If you don't obey us, we'll release data to be sh- shown below to the world. Determine what you will do till November 24th, 11 o'clock p.m. GMT, and it has a bunch of links from the data. Um, That's just retarded. It's like, hey, we hacked you! Congratulations! We are going to hand ourselves over to the authorities now. Uh, There's one other thing I want to talk about for hackers. Uh, Let's see. Uh, okay, my computer's pretty lagging. Probably both my internet connection and computer itself. Yeah, we, we do so, need graphics. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then do some shout outs and promote your channels if you have them. And then I'll end the stream and see if they record it on my side. Okay. Uh, before I get into the, I just want to say one quick thing. Um, if you're a hacker, one of the things you want to do is to create an alias. Uh, not talking about like fucking slash and burn, you know, but. Um, names that sound real but aren't. For example, I go by Dr. Glenn McMahon, and nobody so far has been able to figure out exactly who the fuck Glenn McMahon is because he doesn't really exist. Just to give you a little information about that. The people have been trying to verify my PhD that don't know where my docs is, which, whatever. So they try to look for it, and they're like, Glenn McMahon, where is he? I don't see any details about him, and that's because it it's not real. And I also don't contaminate. I also don't contaminate, so there's that. <clears throat> anyway, um, my name is Dr. McMahon, physics nerd. That's youtube.com slash wasted on a, On this particular identity, I go by that. Uh, I'm not going to say my real name, fuck off. My uh, Twitter is, uh... <laughs> so good. He's actually new to this like he is no. in disguise. Fuck! <laughs> no. No, I'm full... Oh. I'm full Macintosh. Um, and also my my Twitter is physicsnerdyt. And you guys want to also shout yourselves out to YouTube right. and Twitter or whatever? Yeah. So, I'm WealthyWar3587, Twitter is at WealthyWar3587, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash WealthyWar3587, Facebook, facebook.com slash WealthyWar3587, it's all really easy to remember, just remember that name, and don't forget it, and you'll what be name was that? good YouTube people like that, and why not? Who's next? And on top of that, I want to see what information I can get about Wealthy War here. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to reveal anything too damning. <laughs> but I'm going to see what all kind of media accounts, just because his username is the same um, for his social media. Oh, wait, I've typed it wrong. There we go. <clears throat> okay. I have his YouTube, several YouTube videos, uh, Discuss, Gravatar, Congregate, Twitter, um, and see, I have I Facebook. I also uh, have his uh, real name, uh, see your address, I know now where you went to school. Uh, I know how you make your living now. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not revealing too much damning information. Just to give you an idea for those watching this, how quick and easy this is, if I really wanted to, I could dox him <laughs> like that. Um, so that's one of those things about keeping your identity completely secret. And uh, actually, actually, that's, that's not even you on this one. Wow, wow, you, you did, did a pretty good job, job dude. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just noticing I got several, several different, different uh, quote unquote, unquote real names. names. Unless, Unless you have multiple aliases you use. Nope. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so the stocks, stocks information that I have is from somebody else. else. So, so you did a pretty good job at keeping yourself uh, off the radar. radar. Although, Although I feel sorry, sorry for the poor schmuck that is, uh, well, loot. loot. Uh, there's a little things around and my headphones came unplugged. Right, right as you were calling somebody a schmuck. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, keep using different usernames and don't, on different sites, don't have the same. Um, don't put out your phone number, your address, remove your metadata from all your pictures. Um, and don't give out your phone number. Don't, Don't give out your operations, operations etc. That'll, That'll keep you safe. safe. Dr. Dr. Drew, do you need to shut yourself up? I have nothing to say that. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, people might run into me pressing to it, but. Anyway, anyway Dr. Dr. Drew Woods. Also, also not his real name, because he uses alias as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's an evolutionary biologist. So thank you very much for uh, coming to the podcast with us. I think we're going to go ahead and end this here. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any future questions that are in regards to physics, you can ask me on my channel at Wasted Internet Space or on Twitter at uh, Physics Nerd YT. And if you have any further questions, don't send any of that to me. If you have any questions about Minecraft, we'll be War 3587. And um, if you want to just enjoy random miscellaneous gaming. bullshit, then tell you nothing. Yeah. Or gaming in general for wealthy people. Yeah. I, I do all sorts of stuff. Well, kind of. Well, they don't talk and, af and, and after this podcast, podcast we are no longer going to be talking about <laughs> hacking and shit. So uh, enjoy it while you can. <laughs> Oh, we might be who knows. Gonna have to stay tuned to the next one. What the? Look, everyone, this is Talking Time with Caffeine, episode four or five, I think. Anyways, my guest today is. Introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Simeon Scott, though on the internet you probably know me as the Vacuuminator. I um, am the main guy behind the Kickstrike Productions YouTube channel, which produces the web series Everything Wrong with Megaforce and the podcast Dino Charge Discussions. It's very nice to be here. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, you had a topic in mind that you would like to discuss? Uh, yeah, I thought we could go with, um, something that's always interested me personally is, um, the evolution of one's interests over the years. Like, 
your hobbies, how you go from being into one thing as a kid to as a teenager to as a young adult and um, I guess in our case into the future because I, I can't speak for you entirely but I'm a young adult at the moment. <laughs> I was a young adult at the... <laughs> Not so much anymore. <laughs> now you're a beautiful butterfly. Uh, what was your interest in the early ages of the, the Simon universe? Well, when I think the first thing as a kid that really grabbed me and and I got into very hardcore for a while was um, quite honestly one of the biggest cliche things you can be into as a toddler: Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, Tom. I, I was a huge Thomas collector um, when I was like uh, four to six, I want to say. Um, and somewhere in there, I also got into Rescue Heroes for a little bit because that was a thing for a few years. Um, I think the line's still around, but it's like entirely different now, and I hardly ever see it. Um, uh, and then, as I got older, I started getting interested in more things like um, Transformers, and uh, Code Lyoko came into the picture during my um, uh, years leading up to when I was 10. Um, and around then is the time when I started getting into Power Rangers. Uh, how about you? Well, my early days, when I was younger, I liked this, I was like, I've always been into musical shows, mostly, like, overall, what gets me into shows, first of all, is the theme songs. It's the yeah, theme songs, songs are very important in shows. <laughs> and I like the shows with music on, so when I was little, I watched these uh, Jim Hinton shows, like, when, when I was little, it was, it was called Fraggle Rock. They were like little Muppet things with underground, and I also like the Muppet Babies. Yeah, I I had a couple VHSs of Muppet Babies as a kid. I never actually saw it when it was on TV, though. And then, but I watched some of the old Disney cartoons when I was growing up, like uh, Gummy Bears, DuckTales. Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, and Darkwing Duck. Oh, I was all into those things. But then, once I got into about 8th grade, those cartoons seemed trying to get a little silly to me, and that was around the time that Power Rangers came on the air, my 8th grade year. So I started switching from those American type cartoons over to anime for Japanese stuff around that time. Yeah, I think everyone definitely has that um, initial phase where they're like, oh, all American cartoons are kiddie garbage and anime is what is for adults. And I want to be an adult. I definitely had one of those. Um, there, there were a couple years where and this was even the, the only time in my life I've actually been to a Disney park was during these years where I legitimately hated Disney and thought it was such watered down kitty crap up and um, I was like like oh shit like Naruto's where it's at because that's mature and it has real themes to it and now looking back on that show it is such a poorly paced mess yeah my first um trip in the anime world was was DBZ and Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where you can definitely tell the age difference between us because um you said you got into Power Rangers in the 8th grade. PR started in 93. I wasn't born until 97. Yeah. Um but I, I got into Power Rangers, I'm going to say, um, I can't, I always forget the year they were, but it was towards the tail end of Dino Thunder. That's about 2004. And, 2004. Yeah, and when, um, 
SPD came on, that's when I really got into it. And SPD was the season I classify as my first season because it's the first season I watched um, as it aired. Um, Because I think the Dino Thunder episodes I saw were reruns. Um, And then... um, I want... I, I was I I have this weird history with Power Rangers where I got into it for like a year and a half with Dino Thunder and SPD and then I saw the trailer for Mystic Force and I was like Magic Power Rangers is literally the dumbest idea ever and just dropped the show um then when um and and I didn't even hear about Operation Overdrive till a few years later. Lucky so you. So I do- I dodged that bullet. Um, Operation Overdrive is when I started. Is when I stop. Operation Overdrive is when I stopped watching Power Rangers for three years. I totally I totally missed the the um, RPM and the Jungle Fury saga. I was Operation Overdrive just turned me off. Completely. I can I can imagine that having happened to a lot of people actually. And I was um, and I've been watching since the original six dinosaurs air on and off yeah um i i like i said i completely skipped over overdrive and mystic force um i started watching jungle fury as a kid but it was around the 10 or 12th episode that i just lost interest i don't even remember why i was just kind of like yeah i don't really care and and i stopped watching <laughs> And then RPM was another season I didn't hear about until years later, but thankfully have gone back and seen. Um, I, yeah, I did come back a little bit during the during the 10, 2010 era, which I which I thought, oh, they're bringing back the original series. That'd be cool. Then that was, and then Betrayed became a meme. Yeah, it's like they turned the the original that I remember from my eighth grade year into like a '60s Batman. Tribute or something yeah. like yeah, which I like '60s Batman, but Power Rangers is not '60s Batman. <laughs> um, but the good news about that is I got I got a chance to buy the Megazord toy that I couldn't buy back then because my because back then I didn't have a job when I was 13, 14. I couldn't afford those expensive Megazord toys. My yeah, parents, and my parents wouldn't buy them for me. Yeah, I'm still jealous of everyone who actually has like a 2010 or Legacy Mega Sword. That was like right before I started to get back into toy collecting. Um, it's much sm- from right here. It's much smaller than the original 2003 Mega Sword. Well, the well, the thing is, it's such an improvement as far as proportion wise. Yeah. That um, I don't I don't even mind that because. If you look at the original Megazord, there is literally no spatial gap in between the legs. They're just two giant blocks that are next to each other. But, uh, but I don't think they made a Dragon Zord or Titanus for the remake. remake of they did make they did make a Titanus for 2010. They never made a Dragon Zord though. That was my favorite toy Zord back then. Was that Dragon Zord combination things? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Alright, so, I, what about your teen years? What was your... Well, my teen years, like I already said, that's when I started to get into Power Rangers and then stopped on and off several times. Um, I... I had... Um, I think that phase of me hating American cartoons and being an anime guy or at least trying to be an anime guy because I really didn't understand that there was more stuff other than like what was on Cartoon Network at the time. Um, uh, That was like around when I was 14 through 15, I want to say. I... I'm trying to think. When when did Kamen Rider Wizard come out? Because that's when I got into Tokusatsu. Um, what's, and got back into Power Rangers. What's that? What's... Kamen Rider Wizard. I'm trying to think of when the air date for that was. Uh, never saw it. So I can't tell you. I think I saw Ow. the. I think I watched the original. If I, if I if it is what I think it is, I think I saw the original Kamen Rider. Was that like the American Master Rider version? Oh, the Master Rider wasn't the original Kamen Rider. That was an adaptation of Black RX. The original Kamen Rider. 
um, aired in 79, I think? Well, I mean, but that, that was the same, like, the version of it in America? Or something. Yeah, that was, that was the, that was an American adaptation of uh, Black RX, but it was the first American series. Um, yeah, Wizards started in 2012, so it would have uh, been like three years six, ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would have been 16. Um, that's when I got into. Um, that's when I got back into Power Rangers, thanks to um, mainly Linkara's history of Power Rangers. Uh, I was big into Linkara at the time, and. Around the time he posted the Wild Force um, review, that's when I found out History of Power Rangers was a thing, and I watched all of it and learned a lot more about Power Rangers than I ever knew as a kid. Um, I, I didn't even know the Zordon era was a thing until I found History of Power Rangers, oddly enough. But I do remember watching an episode of MMPR as a kid. I just, I didn't know that there was, there was like a continuity there. Yeah. Um. The whole Zoran era was my was my teen years. Mm. Uh, I graduated high school around the Power Rangers in Space era time. Ah, that was a good that was a good time. I, 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 oh, a lot of people love to praise in space. I think it's good, but it's not like amazing. Um, but I do love the way it kind of wraps up everything. Yeah, at the time at least. Um, I like yeah, I, I like the storyline in space about the redeeming this sister thing. Yeah, yeah, Astronema is uh, slash Corona is definitely one of the greatest characters in PR. And, you know, and that's also the time that I I mainly we. Before I mainly got in the in the series for the storyline and stuff, but around my teen years, I also got around for another reason: hot actresses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that definitely does happen at some points with Toku, where you're like, I'm, I'm just watching, I'm just watching for the pretty people. And I had a crush on Ashley back in the day. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. And also my. Other show I used to I used to watch back in the it was a series called on Friday night called TGIF. Wasn't that like a time slot? Yeah, it was on Friday nights from eight to tw eight to ten, where all these sitcoms on ABC were on. And one of my favorite shows at the time, and still one of my favorites, was this show called Boy Meets World. Oh yeah, yeah, Boy Meets World is actually one of my favorite shows from when I was a kid. I caught all of it. Um, on reruns on it was either Disney Channel or ABC Family as a kid. I know I used to watch a ton of TGIF stuff on ABC Family when I was younger. It was probably on both because you know, since Disney bought ABC in the late nineties. Yeah. And then, of course, I had a crush on Topanga, Daniel Fishel, who I've I've been watching the new spinoff series Girl Meets World, and she still looks hot even <laughs> as as, yeah. a, as a as the mom now. She looks hot. And she's about real life. She's about one year younger than me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. I I always wanted to give Girl Meets World a shot, but whenever I hear stuff about it, it keeps sounding like it can't decide if it wants to be its own thing or just a nostalgia fest for Boy Meets World. It's a little both. There's tribute. There's mainly the, the cast is mainly the teenage, the high schoolers now. They're kids, but they also have throwbacks. You know. Of the original cast, mainly the the main the original cast consists of just Corey and Topanga, the parents, and maybe a few guest appearances here and there. Hmm. Yeah, but I was worried about it at first because it's a it's a Disney show, so it's gonna be can't be as um intense as the ABC version was because you no know, Disney's more for kids. Then. Yeah, they. I actually remember they had a. They had it was either it was either one episode or it was a two parter. But Boy Meets World in the later seasons had an episode about alcoholism. Yeah, which is kind of kind of crazy for what was supposed to be a kids show. Yeah, but like, it's like ABC can probably in prime time can do more 
than Disney can. More. Yeah. Um. um let's see. Any anything else I could really touch on? Um. Oh yeah. Uh. I, I, um, unlike most people, like most people think you get into comics when you're a little kid and then you kind of grow out of it and then you get back into it when you're in your, like, your 20s or 30s. Um, I actually didn't get into comics until I was around 14. Um, uh, have you heard of a YouTube channel called Geekvolution? No. Oh, well, um,. They're basically this channel of like a bunch of different guys that their main focus is uh, comic books and superheroes and that kind of stuff. Um, and I can't remember when it was exactly, but on and off they've had um, series where they review um, all the books that have come, all the superhero books that have come out in a week. And um, around the time they first started doing that, um, it kind of piqued my interest. And um, excuse me. That's that's kind of when um, it kind of hit me that I think comics actually sound a lot more interesting than I ever gave them credit for because I always liked superhero cartoons as a kid. Like Justice League, the animated series, is still one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, but I, I always thought the comics were much more goofy and kiddy, and they never really grew out of the Silver Age. Um, but... Uh, I, um, I quickly learned that there's actually a lot of interesting storylines going on these days. You just have to know how to navigate it. Um, and that's kind, kind of when I started getting into comics. And I've been, I've, I've been reading um, on, on a month-to-month -month basis ever since. Yeah. I never got into comics that much as a, as a kid, at all, hardly at all. I, I, did, I did a few comic books, but they're mainly the... Disney versions of the comics, but we only had one comic book store in, in where I grew up at, and the yeah, guy, come, go ahead. And that guy there was very strict. It, like you, you couldn't sneak peek read anything; you had to buy it. And so I got kicked I out. I never, I never got that that practice. I got kicked, I got like, why would you sell a product? Uh, that people may or may not know if they actually want to have to have around for a while if they can at least read the first couple pages and see what it's like. I got kicked out of that place a few times because of that. Wow. Yeah, some stores do that, and that's just a practice that boggles my mind. Yeah. Um, and then... You ever read uh, the, 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 the whole thing with comic book stores is, especially in my, in, in like the more southern states, they are very hard to come across. Like, my, my store is in a, a city over, and we have to drive um, like 45 minutes uh, it's, um, just to get there. That's not counting um, however much time I spend there and then the time coming back. And so the, uh, so I only go once a month. Yeah, and then when I was back in the comics again, I was starting to read those the Japanese comics with the where you read them backwards. Oh, manga, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I I always like it's like I said, I I never really understood the full expansiveness of anime and manga. I know I mispronounced it earlier. Sorry viewers if anyone got ticked off by that. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I never realized just how expansive and how much of a huge industry it is over in Japan until the last couple of years, but I always wanted to try it. Um, like, I, I had that phase, like, a lot of the kids from the pa past 10, 15 years have had of getting into Naruto or One Piece or some other shonen series um, for a couple of years. But I never really went beyond that, though. I I've now been watching um, a couple of anime YouTubers. Um, you may or may not have heard of them, Digibro and Demolition D, and I've learned a lot about just anime as an industry and as a, a fandom um, in the past few months since I started watching them. You ever seen? And, you ever seen any of the? 
on YouTube any of the abridged series? Um, I've heard of them, but since most of them are for shows I've never seen, I don't want to watch them just because it would either spoil the experience or I wouldn't find the jokes funny until I'd seen the actual show. Yeah, you, you should know what you're watching before you watch the sort of funny version of it. Yeah. I do watch um, Sword Art Online abridged, and I have seen all the episodes of that Naruto abridged series that had like 10 episodes and then stopped. And I thought those were both pretty funny. Yeah, you ever, speaking of Japanese stuff, you ever seen all three versions of it? Because one, one series, I, I read the manga, saw the subtitle version and the dub version, just so I could compare them and. I've I've never I've never really done that with with anything. I, I either usually just go one or the other. Um I'm not strictly a dub guy, I'm not strictly a yeah. sub guy, I'm not strictly a manga guy, it's just yeah, whichever piques my interest first. Yeah, I I've I like the I see one series I got I like to see them out and you know see hey, different here, because I, I was watching the Digimon series and th I seen like I watched the American version of this one scene. It's like it's very funny and comedic. And then I saw, I saw the same scene in, in, in the subtitle. It was more serious, like it was, like it was more serious, not as funny. Well, that well that is because Digimon is an anime that is very targeted towards kids, and that's a big thing with anime in general. Um, is Japan has completely different standards on what you can and cannot show kids than we do. Um, like, the, the f their freaking age of consent is like 16 or 17 over there. Yeah, I was reading this uh, Japanese comic. It was like almost adult-themed. And, and then I was... At least over here it would be... Then I was, and apparently in, J in Japan it's for like 12-year-olds. Yeah. Uh, so, fast forward in time a little bit. What are your interests? In like the next couple of years, you mean? Like now, couple, next couple of years, since, well, you're still in your teen, technically, you're still in your teen years, so. Yeah, I am 18, but yeah, still technically teen years. Um, kind of went languishing in the middle of that and being a young adult. Um,. Right now, I'm very heavily into um, Power Rangers and Tokusatsu, with Transformers being my main side interest. Um, uh, although LEGO is starting to rival it, because I bought a lot of LEGO sets this year so far. Um, I, um, I'm very... I'm very much a Toku fan, just because it kind of sucked me in over time. Like I said, it started with watching History of Power Rangers and just learning about that show and then I decided to actually start watching Power Rangers and through that I met people and then I started watching Sentai and Kamen Rider and now I just know so many people in the Toku fandom that it is just kind of my life that I'm just I'm just that guy at work who want, who wants to talk about a Japanese show where people are in spandex and rubber suits Spandex. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but I'm not I'm not like I, I'm not like defensive or trying to fight that. I, I I legitimately love these shows because I feel the thing Japanese superhero shows have always had above American ones is they are very forthright with their themes and whatnot. Whereas in America we like to be more subtle. In Japan. We're blatantly like, um, our heroes fight for truth, justice, and the sake of bringing smiles to little children everywhere. And just that blatant kind of philosophy of we're here to keep peace and justice throughout the world is what makes me like superheroes. Yeah. I think the reason I like Japanese was more than American ones, at least great up because Japanese has a more overdeveloping storyline as in mostly American things whereas one episode 
hit wonders, and one episode that never connects the other episode. It's like, oh, new threat, blah, 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 conclusion, then next episode, totally forgot what happened in the last episode. Well, it does feel like that at times, but it really does depend on the show these days. Um, because you'll have things like the original Transformers was very much just a um, show of the um, story of the week type show, but you fast forward to stuff like um, the last two Transformers shows we had, Transformers Animated and Transformers Prime, and those shows are very deeply ingrained with overarching plots and um, tell and telling specific stories. Like, I'm into the... You ever watch the S.H.I.E.L.D. series? Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah. I tried giving it a shot. Um, I watched, like, the first five episodes when it was... When those were airing. It just wasn't for me. Uh, I've been... I've been watching the whole thing since the thing. Hmm. My friend got me into the... Mar- Mar- I was living with my friend... He got me into the Marvel Universe thing and all the movies and like I said, I like how they're all interconnected, all the movies and series is Well yeah, I still like I still like the movies and stuff. Like I watched Agent Carter as it aired, and I'm definitely gonna watch that Daredevil show because I love Daredevil. Um But but Agents of Shield is just something that as a story it couldn't really grab me. And that's the thing is I do like the idea of interconnected continuities, but if a specific story doesn't grab me, then I'm not going to watch it. I'm just going to read the spoilers so I can know the important stuff. True. I used to, the thing I used to do was growing up, I used to write intercontinuity fan fictions. Like, I had this whole series in the late 90s during the space era when I first got the internet in my area. I didn't really have the internet until, like, late 90s. And that, and that was the, just the library or school. I did this whole mini series about me as a Power Ranger finding Tommy's coin from the 18th, the 18th century. Ah, so you were a self-insert type of guy. Yeah. Uh, I've always wanted to try and write fan fictions, but the thing is, I I I have so much other stuff going on in my life all the time, and it's something where. I, I would get obsessed with it where no it has to be perfect and it has to be done this way and that's just a dark corner of my mind I do not want to put into something I can never make money off of yeah I'm getting to that now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write a book series been trying to write forever but I've always been a writer even as a little kid I, I write these little short stories about me and adventures and me and my friends are having fictional adventures like an under, like there's an underground cavern underneath our elementary school that we explored. So I, I was always in the writing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much a writer too. Though I've always thought books would never be my thing, just because I, I have trouble actually reading novels. I'm very much an audiobook guy because I can't stay focused on books. I love audio, um, I love audiobooks too. Yeah. But, and so I, I definitely would like to be more of like a TV or film writer, but those are very hard industries to break into. But yeah, uh, I used to I read a lot of books because I used to live two hours away from my work, so I had like on, on, I didn't have a car, so I rode the bus. So that's plenty of time. I had like two hours to. <laughs> I didn't want to interact with the people on the bus because they were all loud and crazy most of the time. So I just like grabbed the book and I looked back and like head down, started reading. Yeah. For, t- for two hours. <laughs> for, for yeah. Like... That's. <laughs> oh, were you going to say something? Oh, well, yeah. T- it's read for two hours and two hours back again, like four hour round trip. Jeez. I read through like many. I read through like tons of novels and series during that time. Yeah, I was going to say that's a crazy amount of time to just be reading. Like, you, you, pro- you probably read more books in those, in your years of going to school than I, w- than I would in my entire life if I didn't have an Audible account. Yeah, I just got my Audible like two years ago. Yeah. Um. So, I guess, um, unless you have anything else you wanted to bring up, the only other place we could really go is like where we see ourselves going in the future. I 
well, so, well, well, my, go to my current time now. Oh, um, okay, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought we had done that a little, but go yeah. ahead. Well, like, after I graduated, graduated into my adult, to my adult phases, I switched off. I used to be, like, into, uh, dramas and sitcoms, you know, still I'm a little bit, not, but not as much as I was, because they, some of them lost my interest after TJF went off, TJF went off the air in 2000, and Boy Meets went off the air, uh, I was mainly into, went into working, and then, and about 2009, I started doing YouTube, like I'm doing now, that was my, that's my current interest right now. Hmm. Uh, Me. Videos. Um. At first, I thought YouTube was mainly. <laughs> when I first started YouTube, I thought it was just a chance to see movies and stuff that I didn't have to pay for. Because <laughs> that's what most people did on YouTube back then. They just. Yeah, there, there. I remember for a few years back, there was a YouTube channel that had every Disney movie on it, it and it wasn't taken down for years. Like that's how that's how I saw Tron for the first time. That's how I saw the Sword in the Stone for the first time. Like that that channel was legendary in dodging copyright. Yeah, before YouTube went all banning crazy. Yeah. But then I started watching bloggers, and I started being a blogger mainly. At the at the time when I first started, I had different, totally different plans for my YouTube channel. But then I got in an argument with some people. For the longest time, I was totally shy of the camera. I always thought my picture looked terrible in, in photos and stuff, so I went behind the camera. I started taking pictures, taking videos. Because I was shy and thought it looked stupid. But then after that argument with my former people, my anger and stuff trumped my shyness. I went up up there and started ranting in front of the camera. Hmm. And then, as the years progressed, I less ranting and more just talking and stuff. And I started doing. I started getting into let's plays on the YouTube and like a bridge series. I even had my own little. I even made a little four part of bridge series about about Zelda. The first Nintendo, Nintendo game. Really, that's interesting. Yeah, it's called the Legend of Zelda Bridge. I can hmm. send you. I can send you the link in Skype when we're done. Yeah, I may give that a look later. Um, yeah, my YouTube history is actually something that's al that's almost as crazy as how my personal interests have changed over the years. Um, I remember back when I first started out, I was one of those people who was doing it. Um, because it was like it was it was just after the 07 Transformers movie toy reviewer b b boom um, and so I was one of those people going into it going I want to get rich playing with toys too so I did terrible toy reviews like I'm talking you couldn't see anything I was constantly pausing and going ums and errs I was singing this weird weird song that like it sounded like a five-year-old came up with while I was transforming the toys I was just terrible at it and I did that for two years straight and um, one day I just kind of realized wow my videos are really shit I need to change focus um, so I, I started a, trying to do a bunch of different things for a couple years um, I tried doing comic reviews I tried um, I tried doing more discussion-based videos, and um, now I'm just I'm kind of at this area where I, with Kickstrike Productions, um, the reason I made a separate channel for Kickstrike Productions besides my own personal one is because it is very much something where I have a set plan. Um, I won't reveal how crazy in depth it is or how far forward we are planned, but there is definitely. Um, a lot of stuff we have planned for the future, a lot of stuff we want to do, and 
Um, it's it's not just going to be me. Over time, we're going to start bringing in more people, and um, I do want it to become not necessarily like a YouTube network, but more like a independent production house that's based out of YouTube. Yeah, I was hoping that my um, channel would a little help on my channel with with my with my class and that's my my YouTube name is my city and my graduating class from hmm. Vandalia I'm from Vandalia Ohio and, and we all graduated in 1998 so I was hoping you know we get, get together but apparently most of my old friends are very camera shy and don't like cameras yeah, you'll find a lot of the people you know as a kid are that way. And, um, I, and I thought I was the shy one back in school. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, everyone loves being loud and outgoing until you start pointing a camera at them, and then they go, oh, crap, someone's going to see this later. Yeah, that, was my oh. nick that was my nickname. In when I used to go to church camp, I used to take all these crazy pictures with stuff. Before people could realize I was there, they called me the. My nickname was the stealth photographer. I'm like, snap! <laughs> <laughs> really fast. I was like, always got the best shots of people sometimes. Nice. <sighs> yeah. I, I, I didn't. I was. Ne I never really had an interest in photography specifically. I'm more of a guy who's more interested in the. Um, <coughs> you okay over there? Yeah, chronic coffee and stuff. Oh, sorry to hear that. Ugh. Um, but I've I've always been interested in YouTube more from the base creative level of writing the video and coming up with the idea for a new series. And I've always been a story guy. Um, Me too. Like right now, I'm doing primarily review based stuff, but I do. If eventually in the next couple of years once we have the capability to do so I want to move into doing um, stuff that has more storylines in it that's more of a web series and not a review s show with with story elements in it but like kind of like what data the database ranger is doing uh, yeah he's kind of like at the halfway point of where I want to be he's a review show that has a storyline to it uh, that's based around the review show. Um, I eventually want to get to a point, um, and this is far down the line for us at Kickstrike, so I probably shouldn't be saying this, but whatever, it's my YouTube channel. Um, I eventually want to get to a point where we are doing shows that are primarily story-based. And if there is a review in it, it's it's mostly just there to supplement a scene or two. Yeah. Like, I, like me, I, I, had pl I had plans too, but some of the things you can't do by yourself, that you need a, a wider range of audience to do stuff, and that's where I'm at right now. All these ideas, but mainly I'm, since I'm soloing most of this stuff. Yeah, that's, that's always the roadblock you hit on YouTube is, it's, I have this great idea, but I either don't have the equipment or the um, crew to pull it off. But it looks like you got the you're starting to get the crew together. Yeah, that that's definitely something I need to work on in the next couple of years. I I want to be able to get funding for the channel. Um, eventually we're going to start a Patreon. We just don't have enough subscribers yet to justify it. Um, but I I want to start getting funding for the channel so I can pay for things like actors and better equipment. Um, right now. I've actually, for the past couple of months, been saving up for a new computer so I can have something that can handle um, more intense edits and adding effects to things. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting the computer too. My computer's kind of old now. I would, I'm waiting for my tax refund to get back so I can use that to get it. Hmm. Because that's one of my, that's my main sources of income right now. This is my tax refund. Cause my job job but after bills and stuff there's barely anything there most of the time yeah that's that's kind of the way it is for a lot of people these days with the minimum wage being so so low and whatnot and I don't mean to get into political stuff but 
That could be another three-hour conversation station right there. <laughs> oh yeah, you get me started about my po my political pet peeves, and we gonna be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> but and probably no one will ever watch your channel or mine ever again. <laughs> uh, but you have stuff to do, other podcasts, to, other podcasts to go on. <laughs> yeah. So, but your other thing, if you ever need any help, if you're productions give me a call i'm oh i definitely do that man thanks for the offer uh thanks and if you want to be a guest on here again <laughs> yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool time i've enjoyed talking to you about about this this isn't a topic i often get to touch with a touch on with other people so this was fun all right so well we're gonna all right you want to any closing remarks about yourself, your channel, or anything before we go? Um, yeah, uh, if you guys um, want to look me up, um, I'm primarily known as the Vacuuminator on the internet, although I've started using my real name a lot more frequently now, um, which is Simeon Scott. I don't mind stating it at all. We're, we're in an age where being afraid to say your full name on the internet is borderline paranoia. Plus, <laughs> honestly. Plus, people can look it up anyways. They most people, you know, it, can find out. Exactly. And, um, uh, I, I'm very, as I've said, I'm very much into tokusatsu and Transformers and started, I'm starting to get on both a, a new, a new phase where I'm into Lego and Star Wars. Um, uh, not Lego Star Wars, but those things separately. Um, uh, so if you guys are interested in any of those things, look me up. Maybe maybe you'll be interested in some of the content I make over on Kickstrike Productions. Uh, we have some fan trailers and a few fan intro stuff was what we were doing really early on. Um, now, now we've got um, everything wrong with Megaforce, which is currently on hiatus because the time I was putting into that video is now being put into getting a driver's license because that's something I need to do really soon. Um, and um, Dino Charge Discussions, which is a weekly podcast where myself and my co-host Jacob Brody, aka Database Ranger of Database Rangers Power Reviews, um, talk about um, every episode of Power Rangers Dino Charge as they come out for um, a half hour to an hour. Or um, I don't think we've ever gone over an hour. We might have. I'm not sure. Um, but it's it's an in-depth podcast discussion about the episode, kind of like what this is with general topics. Um, and uh, I also have my personal YouTube channel where I do um, frequent, but there's no set schedule. I, I do vlogs over there just talking about whatever random stuff is on my mind and what's going on in my life. Um, so yeah, give me a look if anyone's interested. I, I look forward to hearing your next Dino Charles review when it, when it finally airs on uh, YouTube. You're going to be recording it after our session here. Yeah, I'm going to be recording it in about a couple hours, actually. Uh, well, well, everyone have a good time. Tell us your tell us your interest down in the comments below of your evolving TV shows, comic books, movies throughout your ages, and what, what you're into now, and what you were into as a baby, or whatever. And as always. Enjoy the randomness. See ya. Bye, people.